There's a park right next to where we're going to live. Where? There, see, it's called Agincourt Fields. That little green bit? It's a park. It ain't the Dales. I know that, you ungrateful little... Apologise to Lisa's son. She's doing her best for us. She don't want to live on an housing estate in Leeds any more than the rest of us, eh, Of Course I don't. I'm sorry, Lisa. Forget it, love. It's time we all took a leaf out of your book, sweetheart, and first up to reality. It won't be so bad. Agincourt Estate's quite nice. Ah, at least we won the Battle of Agincourt, eh? <laughs> Even if we have lost the Battle of Emmerdale. Zach. Uncle Zach, what sort of talk's that? Who says lost the Battle of Emmerdale? Mandy, what is done is done. No, it ain't. I've been made an offer. Well, what sort of an offer? Oh. Oh. What happened to the I'll be up in five minutes? Would you rather a pace around down here last night or tossed and turned in bed? Uh, neither, actually. I hope that wasn't meant to be funny. Oh, I gave up on funny months ago. This is what I mean. If you'd had some sleep, then you'd have a clearer view of things. <laughs> sleep? Yes. You're not thinking straight. Well, at least I am thinking. Steve, listen to me. You never saw Cathy before you hit her, right? Right. So she couldn't have seen you? What are you talking about? Is that all you can say after a night's sleep? Then I'm glad I stayed awake. Of course she could have seen me. No! You were in darkness. The most Cathy could have seen was headlights. Well, it's not like you looked her straight in the eye and hit her deliberately. No. So? She's as ignorant as you are innocent. Yeah, you're right. I'm just not thinking straight. Get some sleep. I've got to get to home farm. Well, you can be late. I'll ring them. Say you've been up all night with food poisoning or something. Go to bed. Is this your idea of a joke? Do you think I joke about something like this? Paddy's mother says she'd pay you to marry somebody. Anybody? Yeah, except Paddy. She's mad. Well, I know she is, but she's serious. <laughs> I'll marry you, Mandy. Shut up, Butch. She said anybody, not anything. <laughs> Carry on, Mandy. Carry on? What's up with your head, Zach? And what did you say to Paddy's old lady? Well, I told her she could stick a silly idea. I should hope so. Shh. Only now, now I thought I should tell you what. A good thing you have her, Mandy. Very good. We haven't eaten anything, Andy. Sorry. I know it's weird for. What's wrong? He's trying to skive school. I'm not trying to skive school. I just feel sick, that's all. Have you been sick? Marnie's sickness. He's pregnant. Yeah, all right, Robert. Well, you look all right to me, lad. Yeah, I'm all right. I used to have some chocolate at break or something. No, 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 you sit down. He does feel a bit clammy. <laughs> well, keep him off school. But you'll have to stay here. I promised I'd sit with Cathy. Oh, God, I forgot. I mean, she'll need a familiar face there if she comes round. I can't let him down. No, no, of course not. Sorry. No, don't worry about it. Go on, you go back up to bed and Robert, get off to school. OK. Where's that other one having a baby? See ya. What is it with you dingles? Huh? Hey. Hey, what was that? Mrs. Dingle? Oh, you know what I mean. Paddy's mother might have made Mandy a proposition, but it was a mental one. Only now you seem to be behaving like it isn't. You're as mad as she is. Mandy had a piece of livestock to be sold at market. Hold on, Lise. No one's selling me. I could have kept quiet about what Paddy's mum said. Well, why didn't you? It's ridiculous and you know it. You're only giving your uncles that false hope. I wouldn't be so unkind and you know that. Our family's backs up against the wall and what have I done? You have done everything you can. You have. I am. Not yet. Hi, Rachel. I'm sorry I'm late. Andy's not well. Oh, nothing serious. Well, I'm never sure with that kid. He's such a little actor. Sometimes I don't know whether I should give him a hug or an Oscar. <laughs> right, I'll get off to school. Okay. Has she um, opened her eyes or anything since? No. Well, make sure you talk to her. I know she can hear us. Probably make her worse. 
Right, I'm going back after school for a couple of hours. OK, um, what about if I read the newspaper? No. Tell her your dirty jokes. <laughs> It's terribly kind of you to make time for me, Viv. Oh, Vic will look after the shop. Only customers we get this time of the morning are potty old bags. Digestive? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thing is, Barbara, when I suggested that you bought the dingles off, I didn't mean that you should go and ask Mandy if she... <gasps> but don't you see? It's the only way. Only way to what? Well, to guarantee that my darling Patrick and that... That lump will never speak again. Still don't understand. Patrick would have been so disgusted at the very thought that the Dingle girl could actually marry for money that... that he would have dumped her. You see? You do understand? Yes, of course I do. Anyway... It was not to be. Cal, I need your advice. I'm a desperate, round the flaming twist or doing the right thing. All three. Well, you're definitely desperate. We all know that. <sighs> yeah. And you're round the twist, but not as much as Paddy's mum. She's just mad. Yeah, madder than a moe bra. And then again, so is marriage. It's just a bit of paper. So, I reckon you should do what the old nutcase wants and marry someone. <coughs> like who? I don't know. Someone who's not gonna bother you. <laughs> Just get the money, and as soon as Paddy's mum's off the scene, you can start seeing each other again. <laughs> so if you and me, you go for it. Marry someone you couldn't stand just for the money. No, Mandy. I could never do that. I was really, really in love with Christine. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking of nobody except yourself. Hang on. Hang on! It was Mandy that told us. I never forced her. No, you didn't, but that's in the point. What is, then? You know as well as me. Mandy only told us to get it off her conscience. She'd already said no to Paddy's mother. Yeah, but now she's changed her mind. No, Zach. She wanted us to back her up. But you, oh no. You only thought of yourself. And now Mandy can't let you down. Planning a long lunch, are we? What, a bottle of wine, a couple of hours chatting? No. I just come back for a quick buy. I'm due back at work in half an hour. Oh, we're still working, are we? Well, why shouldn't I be? Well, I hear you've abandoned your responsibilities. Such as? Looking after our son. What? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I don't. Ah, Graham. You're talking about Graham. I'm talking about a virtual stranger who you seem happy to leave in charge of my son. Your son? Funny how you come over all fatherly when you're feeling guilty. Guilty? Yes. Graham's a nice bloke. And he's not a stranger. Not to me, anyway. And he's looked after Joseph once. And what's more, Joseph really likes him. I'm his father. And don't you forget it. <laughs> I won't. But I can't speak for Joseph. Then don't leave him with strangers. All right, then, Chris. You come back here at four o'clock, then. T today? Yes. I've said I'd go and sit with Cathy for a couple of hours. Look, I can't just drop everything with three hours' notice. Really? Well, I know a man that can. you want? Leave me alone. I've no more to say to you. Well, I've got plenty. Oh, people like you always have. But then I generally find that when you take out the swear words and the blasphemy, there isn't much left. Oh, you be insulting and personal. Then I suggest we stop now. Fine, bye. Thank you. Good afternoon. Look, Mrs. Kirk, look, I'm sorry for yesterday for what I said. Do you really suppose I care? Nothing you could say could hurt me more than you have already. You beguiled my son with your wicked little heart. <laughs> you don't deserve him, but you've got him. No, you're right, Mrs Kirk. Please, have the decency not to rub my face in it. No, I have got a wicked little heart. Then I wish you'd tell my son. I won't need to, he'll find out for himself. Eventually. No, soon. I'll take you upon your offer. You give me the money I need to buy my farm, which is six grand, and I'll marry anyone. Me and Paddy will never speak to each other ever again.
Got over our food poisoning, have we? Yes, thanks. You look terrible. Well, it wasn't exactly easy to sleep with my head down the toilet. Really? Well, where do you usually sleep, then? <laughs> well, you can't exactly blame me for being in a good mood. Everyone is. What? About Cathy's improvement. All she's done is open her eyes. Well, that's all any of us do when we first wake up. But she hasn't woken up. Good news, though, isn't it? I'll celebrate when we know for certain. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you and Kim have got the champagne on ice already. Let's just hope Cathy doesn't let you down. I mean, she might, just might, make a full recovery. That's it. I'm sick of you hiding behind that damn real chair. Steve! You keep out of this, Laura! No, just ignore him! I'm tired of ignoring him. Do you hear what he just said? I heard enough, but violence isn't the answer. I couldn't agree more. Just get out of here, Chris, before I hit you myself. So, you can have what you want. If making my whole family happy makes you happy, then I will. I thought Patrick's happiness was all you cared about. I care about all the people I love, Mrs Kurt, but Paddy's just one person. An entire family is much more important. I'm glad we both feel the same about our nearest and dearest. <laughs> Something in common, eh? What a laugh. There'll be no wriggling out of this, you know. I want it written in stone. Fair enough. I'll borrow a chisel. First, you must find a fiancé within one month. That's pushing it a bit. I'm sure you'll find a way. Second, you will sign a contract promising to remain married for two years. And last, but most important of all, you will not breathe one word of this to Patrick. He mustn't be allowed to believe that there's any way of stopping your wedding. But what if he finds out another way? You just have to ensure he doesn't, if you want the money. And what about the money, Mrs Kirk? What about your side of the bargain? You'll get it on your wedding day. How do I know that? Do I seem like a woman who doesn't keep her word? <laughs> totally. Very well. I'll have my solicitor draw up a contract which satisfies both parties. Right. Make sure he writes it in English, not in Martian. Yes, yes, I understand. You understand nothing, Mrs Kirk. Nothing. You need help. I'm aware of that. But are you going to give it to me? No. I want to sell it to you. Hiya. That smells nice. Mm. Ours is in the kitchen. How was Cathy? Uh, still no change. She hasn't opened her eyes again? Nope. Well, I suppose we can't expect a miraculous recovery. Andy certainly looks like he made one. No, I just like talking and running at the same time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll catch up with you later. I'm sorry. That was rude. But can you be quick? Uh, yeah, right. Well, I'm supposed to be on Cathy duty after school, and uh, I wondered if you'd babysit for me. Um, it's sort of short notice. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chris has let me down. You get to your class. I'll sort something out. Rachel, kids can riot for a minute. <laughs> Why has Chris let you down? Well... I guess it was half my fault. Go on. He picked a fight with me. About you. Me? Babysitting Joseph. Well, I've only done it once. I know. He feels guilty, and when Chris feels guilty, he tries to take it out on everybody else. So what did you say? I told him to put his money where his mouth was. And asked him to look after Joseph this afternoon. Mm. Yeah. But he won't do it. Anyway, I I'm not being fair on you. Forget I ever mentioned it. Too late. I'll be happy to look after Joseph. Can you drop him round to me on the way to the hospital? What's the time, Andy? I've got my watch on. I've never known you to take that watch off before. I took it off last night for me, bath. Oh, well, it's not up in the bathroom. I've just cleaned up there. Well, it's somewhere. How should I know? Just know how much you love that watch. I lost it. That's okay. Why didn't you say? I thought you'd be mad at me. You bought it. 
It's a present. When you give someone a present, it belongs to them. Does it? Of course it does. How did you lose it? I don't know. Have you had a good look for it? Yeah, I looked everywhere. Andy, look at me. Is there something you're not telling me? Hiya. I'm starving. There's some cold sausages in the fridge. Great. Want one? Not all. Go on. You're eating for two now. Everyone at school can't wait to see the pregnant boy. Oh, yeah. Hi. Come in. Where's Rachel? Upstairs? Yeah. Well, only if she came in through the window, mate. <laughs> She's still up the hospital. Uh, it's just I need to get home. I've got a lot of marking to do. Yeah, well, you go and do it. I can look after this, then. I don't know why Rachel never asked me in the first place. Well, I didn't like I've had no experience. Just look at him for a shining example. <laughs> she probably didn't want to impose on you. No need to make excuses, son. I know why Rachel wanted you to look after little Joseph. Why? I take it you'll be staying the night again. Again? It's OK, we're all blokes together. So? Well, if you and Rachel want to keep it quiet, discretion is my middle name. There's nothing to keep quiet about. Of course there's not. <laughs> no, you don't understand. There's really nothing going on between Rachel and me. If you say so. Yes, I do say so. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry I'm so late. Come on, son. Time for a pint. Oh, right. Right, see you later. Sorry I've left you holding the fort all afternoon, Steve. That's no problem. Uh, did you manage to move your stuff into the cottage? <laughs> Eventually. No thanks to the idiots I paid to help. Well, you should have asked me. You don't look strong enough to climb into a bed, never mind lift one. <sighs> you should never have come in today. You're obviously not over whatever you had. Oh, I'm fine. I just need to finish this off. You're not fine. Go home. You need some sleep. I'm too wound up to sleep. Oh, come on, Steve. You can't let Chris get to you. He already has. You see, I really, really care about Cathy, but Chris... Well, he's managed to scare me. Scare you? Yeah, I'm too scared to even visit her. In case he twists it around in his sick little mind and convinces people that I've got some kind of evil motive. Oh, Steve, listen. You know how you feel about Cathy. That's all that matters. Go to see her. Do you think I should? Yes, forget about Chris. See Cathy and then get some rest. I'm really sorry I was late. I was just leaving and I thought that Cathy said something. And? No. The nurse said it was nothing. Just a noise. Mm. I'm sorry. Even though I don't know her very well. You will. One day. So, it really has been no bother then? <laughs> it's been a pleasure. <laughs> a pity his own father doesn't feel the same way. Yes, it is. Assuming that is that you're telling the truth. Oh, believe me, I am. After a whole day spent trying to be nice to kids, most of them horrible, it takes a special one to make me smile. In fact, that's the main reason why my wife and I never had any kids. You... you don't often talk about your wife. I know. Are you divorced now? I'm really sorry, Graham. It's absolutely none of my business. She died. And... Why am I such an idiot? You're not. I am. I... It was so obvious that you didn't want to talk about your wife, but oh no, I had to open my big mouth. No, it's fine, really. I'm glad it's out in the open. You're the first person I've told since I came to Emmerdale. Well, then I'm honoured. But why is it that you talk about it as if it's something to be ashamed of, like a, a terrible secret? I'm not ashamed, but I do like to keep it secret. Private, anyway. Why? I'm... I'm sure that people would be sympathetic. There's your answer. The moment people find out I stop being a person, 
All of a sudden, I'm that poor, poor man who lost his wife so tragically. I know they mean well, but it's my wife who's dead, not me. I understand. I know. And I won't tell a soul. I know that, too. Hiya. I thought she'd had her last visitor today. Oh, I was just passing. Is it out of hours? They don't have silly rules when they're like this, love. Well, do you work here? No. <laughs> I'll live here. My son. Next room. Oh. Coma. Just like this, poor lass. Only he's been here six months. Her eyes are moving. It's nothing. Are you a close relative? No, I'm just a friend. Well, acquaintance, really. Why? Well, you've got to mind what you say to folk. Yeah, I understand. But like I said, I don't really know it that well. I only came in because I heard she'd woken up. She never woke up. She opened her eyes for a second. Well, what does that mean? I'm not a neurosurgeon. I'm a dinner lady. But? But I've learned a lot this past six months. Even if the doctors try and sugarcoat everything. And? If that lass wakes up, she won't ever be the same as she was. Or they can learn her to walk, maybe learn her to talk, but they'll never learn her who she used to be. What, are you saying she won't remember anything? Not a thing. She won't remember how to brush her own teeth. Poor little thing. So pretty and all. I'll leave you be. Time I said goodnight to my love. Thanks. Hey, it was nice meeting you. I know you can't hear me, Kathy. But thanks. I really needed a good night's rest. <laughs>